Well, welcome back to Information Week's Valley View. We're back here with the Senior Product Manager of Windows Phone 8 from Microsoft, Greg Sullivan. Greg, thanks for joining us on the show. My pleasure. Great to have you here. You don't have a tattoo on your arm that has the Microsoft logo on it, do I, you? I, I don't, but I heard there's a foot massage that I'm going to get later on. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> you just have to go into exec to get that. So very good. Glad you're watching the show while you're waiting here. <laughs> So uh, great to have you on the show. Uh, boy, oh boy, a lot of news in the last few weeks. Uh, you're not only uh, maybe doing some stuff with Windows Phone 7, but also you've got a bunch of phones here that are representative of the newest operating system, which is Windows Phone 8, right? Yeah, we just launched Windows Phone 8 uh, within the last couple of weeks, and we're really excited about the, the great wave of new devices that we've, coming out, that we've got coming out. Uh, Nokia, um, HTC, Samsung, among others. Um, it's pretty exciting because we've had... Some things that are true about Windows Phone. You carry all of these along. with you. I do, I do. I just, uh, I love to, you know, okay. test them all out. It's one of the fun parts of my <laughs> Impress job. Impress people at airports. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been asked, how many phones do you really need? Uh, <laughs> but it turns out that one of the one of the things that's always been true about Windows Phone is it really is the most personal smartphone that you can get. It, it represents the things you care about and puts them right here on the start screen. That's even more true with Windows Phone mm -hmm. 8. And, uh, and we can hold the great one up here, and, uh, one with the start screen. Yeah, here. here we go. So, so hold it up for the uh, camera. I don't know if we can see that right there. So, yep. One of the changes that we've made with Windows Phone 8 is that the, the, all of the live tiles, which bring all of this information that you care about right on the start screen, are now customizable. So mm -hmm. you can select from a range of sizes, three sizes for each tile. And really, it, it brings a powerful degree of customization to make that start screen even more yours. So where other smartphones show you a, a grid of, of icons that you can click to launch apps, um, the, the start screen on, on Windows Phone really comes alive with all the information that you care about, um, bringing you closer to the, to the stuff that you're really interested in. Um, the, it's a different approach. Now, there, there, are, there are a lot of new features in Windows Phone 8, and we'll get to that, but I, I do want to address the fact that you have different phones here. So we've got the Nokia, the 920, and, and the 8. What was I holding up there? Yeah, what, that is a that's a Nokia Lumia 920. That's it's, uh, 920. Okay. An amazing device, incredibly brilliant screen. There, clear black display, um, high def display. Has supports wireless charging. Has an incredible camera. They've got optical image stabilization uh, in their camera, um, which really does incredible things. In addition to the low light images. Video. That will, what else we have here? This that's is a the Samsung, Samsung Ative S. Um, not currently arranged in in the U.S., but uh, that one is also available, um, and it's got a Huge 4.8 inch screen, really uh, thin and light, um, expandable storage, nice 8 megapixel camera. Um, and so one of the nice things about this is you really have a range of, of choices and styles and, mm -hmm. and colors, obviously. One of the things that the manufacturers are doing is, is really tying into this live tile uh, design and having hardware that, that is well integrated and kind of represents that. Um, as you can see, the, the 8X from HTC is another great example of that. And there, there's a minimum hardware requirement for these manufacturers mm -hmm. for Windows Phone 8. What, what, what are the basic specs they have to have? Well, these all have a, uh, a powerful Qualcomm uh, Snapdragon S4 processor, dual core, dual core. microprocessor. Um, they've, they've got uh, you know, great high res displays um, and uh, uh, RAM and storage. So we have. Uh, minimum specs with respect to the sensors that these devices have um, so that we can ensure that every Windows phone will deliver a great experience. You won't have some that are running on underpowered hardware, That's right. uh, which is something you see in, uh, in other, other platforms. Now, uh, we also noticed that the price points of these are coming in a bit lower for a two-year plan than uh, competitors, say Google and Apple phones. Um, is there some subsidy going on uh, for Microsoft through the carriers, or how does that work? Well, I don't think there's anything different. I think we're in a position of a challenger uh, in this in this space, which is uh, you know which is exciting for us. But uh, one of the things you're seeing is a, is a as a really aggressive outreach by the OEMs and the mobile operators to bring these devices to market to establish this this ecosystem. They they really keyed on the fact that we have a different approach to the user experience that's completely. Uh, uh, di innovative and different than what's out there. Um, and so I think there's a lot of aggressive uh, um, so offers there's going on. $99, of $99.99 for a two-year mm -hmm. plan. And I, I just want to make note, Sprint's the only outlier. Are you guys working to try to get them to carry these we're, as well? We've yeah. got nothing to announce today, unfortunately, okay. but certainly we're we're continuing Nobody's to watching. Talk you, can, you can tell <laughs> us. <laughs> okay. we're, uh, we're, of course, uh, we have a great relationship with Sprint. We're continuing to work with them. Um, you know, they've carried uh, uh, Windows Phone 7 devices, and uh, we're continuing to work with them and, and look forward to, to moving on with their and relationship. One last question on the devices, at least for me, yeah. is mm -hmm. on, the, on the Nokia side, you guys have made a big investment. 
Nokia seems to get some of the features first. How do you walk that fine line uh, between Samsung and HTC mm -hmm. and Nokia and, and make everybody happy? Well, it, it, our, our relationship with Nokia is unique in, in certain ways, but we, uh, we provide, uh, we, all, we have unique relationships with all of our, our OEM partners. I mean, HTC has been a long time uh, uh, you know, purveyor of Windows mobile devices and Windows phones, and so they they've really um, have a close relationship all the way up and down the chain. Um, Samsung is doing some really innovative work. So we have um, unique relationships with all of them, and they all understand that um, our platform runs across a range of devices. The interesting thing to me is that um, the result of the Nokia uh, relationship has been, in some sense, a, a renewed interest and in a, in a deeper interest uh, among some of our uh, existing partners. So it's been, it's been really exciting. I think the results are clear with the exciting hardware that's coming out this fall. You mentioned common platform across multiple devices, and we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the larger tablet that's sitting here. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, why did you bring the tablet? What, what does this represent? I well, I think one audience. of the things that, oh, let me wake it back up here. One of the things that um, folks who, who use Windows Phone will recognize is um, the live tile interface is something that we're bringing to, um, to Windows as well. Mm -hmm. It's interesting in, in a time so when- So this is a tablet, this is an RT, uh, one of the new- This is actually a, an Intel device, so it's running, okay. it's, uh, running Windows 8. Windows, Windows um, 8, okay. And so it, but one of the things that, that I wanted to highlight is the similarity between the user experience. So when, one of the things that folks have known about Windows Phone for a while is that we had a dramatic and different approach to how you use a smartphone. These mm -hmm. live tiles bringing information right to the start screen. Um, has been very well reviewed and well regarded and people who buy a Windows phone have really liked it. Um, but we've had in some sense an awareness problem and, and not as many people have known about the different approach we take. I think Windows 8 and the advent of uh, Windows, Windows adopting essentially the same live tile mm -hmm. interface is gonna generate more awareness for the benefit of that approach that brings information. Especially right useful to in devices that have a touch screen where you can do what you can do on a smartphone. Exactly, yeah. so, the, so the user interaction model is similar, the gestures, the idea that I, I, I can swipe and, and move through these and, uh, and launch things. One of the other things that, that's true though is that at a time when Windows Phone has, has taken essentially the engine of Windows 8, we've taken the, the kernel, the underlying operating system architecture and delivered on, on, on a phone, um, Windows has, has adopted the interface from, from Windows Phone. So there's a, there's a real synergy here in terms of not just the user experience, but how your content flows across these devices. What do you say to critics? Because there have been a lot of people who have been critical of, of that move, especially on the Windows platform, where mm -hmm. some users are a little bit confused by the tile interface, and there's two ways to do everything. Well, there's a, you know, change is, uh, change is often hard. I think one of the things that, that we're seeing is as people realize how, uh, how this interface works, especially on a touch device, the benefits are, are really profound. And when you see a Windows phone and a Windows slate or tablet, uh, an Xbox, for example, all sharing the same kind of paradigm, and you see your content flow across all of these devices, if I take a picture on my phone, it automatically gets loaded up to SkyDrive and appears right here on my start screen on my, on my, mm -hmm. on my tablet. Um, I can access it from my Xbox. My music flows across all these devices. Right. If I, if I start a Word document on my Windows 8 slate, um, it automatically shows up in the Office Hub on my Windows phone in my recent document list. So we're really connecting both, we have this user experience that spans them, but also a, a substrate that connects them seamlessly. So as a user, your stuff just shows up where you want it. Um, and that's gonna be a pretty powerful proposition. I want, I want to talk about some more. You've, you've touched on some of the features of Windows Phone 8. Um, there are probably a couple others that maybe we want to touch on, like rooms and data sense. But I also want to move to the enterprise side mm -hmm. as well, because that, you know, what you've painted here is a picture that, um, you know, there's a, there could be a codependency on your mobile and desktop and laptop devices. But, you know, start with some of the other cool features in Windows Phone 8. Well, I think one of the, one of the great features is, um, that you mentioned is, uh, is rooms. So I'm gonna try to do my upside down demo here. Um, but one of the great things about rooms is that we've had this idea in Windows Phone where, there we go, where the People Hub brings together all of the contacts, the people I care about, and shows me all of the ways I can communicate with them. So whether I wanna post on your Facebook wall or, or see what you're saying on Twitter or, uh, or send you a text message, um, I don't have to think about the application first. I think I, I just want to send you, I want to contact you, and then all of those methods are available. In, in Windows Phone 7.5, we added a new feature called Groups, which let you filter down 
all of your contacts and say, you know what, I just want to see what's going on with my family. So I'll check in with them in that group. Well, we've taken that a, a step farther in, uh, in Windows Phone 8 and had this, uh, this feature called Rooms. And what Rooms does is it brings together a set of people that you, that you want to have a, a more intimate sharing relationship with. And it brings them together in this virtual space where we can have group chat. And I can check in with my location. We can share calendars. We can all edit that calendar jointly. We can share photos and notes. So it's one place where we create this virtual four walls mm -hmm. where everything we share and say, because sometimes you may want to post something with a group of folks that you don't want to share with the entire world on Facebook, for example. So if I have my family or Friday night poker buddies or, uh, or my team at work, and we want to create a space where we can kind of have a more intimate sharing relationship, Rooms does that. But it also ties into all of the other social networking that we're doing, so I can, I can incorporate that as well. But Rooms really creates this space where we can share things. Of course, you could look at some of the competing operating systems, for example, Android, right? Mm -hmm. And what they do is they say, well, you can organize your friends based on circles as a part of Google+. So how do you respond to that because actually you have to go to someone else for a social network because that, that is sort of a natural way of doing it, saying I've got my social network and here's how I organize everybody on my social network. It would be great for that organizational principle to bubble up into all of my devices and, and keep it in sync not only in the cloud but on the devices. Yeah, and we, we do integrate with social networks well and incorporate mm -hmm. that very well into the people hub on the phone. I think also there's, there's an interest among people to have, a, to have a way that is kind of more personal and intimate. Mm -hmm. And, and to have control over that and to not necessarily have sure, all of that yeah. managed uh, by a third party. Okay. And I, I've, I've made the case that, you know, Microsoft stands in maybe the best position to uh, knock RIM out of the enterprise. So let's talk about some of what Microsoft has done in Windows Phone 8 to make it more enterprise ready. Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of the, um, there are many benefits that we get from having this new Windows engine, the, um, the Windows 8 engine mm -hmm. underneath the hood here. Um, among them are you know, full device encryption, um, enhanced security, secure boot. Um, we've talked about things like uh, private uh, device dis or application distribution for enterprises. One of the new features that we have is this thing called the, the company hub. And so I can go in and in, as an enterprise create, you know, we've got our, our fictional Contoso IT company here, and I can create a hub, an application that, that presents applications and allows users to download them, but also in the same panoramic view lets me have a letter from the, you know, CEO, um, information about, uh, you know, s help and support, anything that the IT tar department wants to, to provide for me, mm -hmm. including other internal line of business applications and content. So the ability for enterprises to not in a public marketplace, but in a private distribution internally, deliver their own applications, manage the, the devices, um, and, uh, and, have, and have access to their content, and have all of their users have access to their content, is one of the new features that we have as well. It, what about things like Skype and voice over IP? And, and, and you know, I'll tack on a question there. Is mm -hmm. there any, are there any plans to integrate that with, say, Google Talk? Well, the way, that, uh, the way that Skype works today is, is we've, we've enhanced the platform in Windows Phone 8 to do a better job of fully supporting uh, voice over IP applications and the multitasking that's required in there. That's a, another inherent benefit that we get from being on this new architecture. Um, and it's true that, that we've, in fact, platformized that, that voice over IP capability. So not just Skype, but any VoIP application can deeply integrate with the contacts database and, f and become fully a part of the... Um, the communications mechanism of the phone, so that your contact list lets you Skype or or other uh, uh, really other VoIP applications. Really, uni and, yeah. and it doesn't. It's not specific just to Skype. We've right. kind of platformized that capability in the same way that we have with speech, for example. Uh, any application provider can write to our speech APIs, enabling any application to be fully speech enabled. It's not just something that only the operating system has. So we've taken that same approach with with VoIP, um, and that's something that uh, that Skype has. To take advantage of with a great native Skype app uh, that they're delivering, and any VoIP third party can do that as well. And we've, we've long made the argument that, and, and many people have, that the volume of apps is not the, the game, it's whether you have the right ones. But um, there are still a few gaping holes in the, uh, in the App Store. Um, you know, Google is, as, you know, there's not a lot of Google stuff. Um, in the App Store, YouTube, uh, YouTube isn't there. Example. Google Plus is not there. Uh, I think maybe Google Drive is coming. Um, 
MLB is missing. You know, a few few of the kind of major ones. Yeah. So well, we do have a YouTube app. I think that's that's uh, people are, are a little bit confused on that. It's um, it operates a little bit differently. It integrates with the native media player, so that when you uh, when you have that installed and and, and search and find a YouTube. Uh, video, it'll actually launch and integrate with the with the built-in uh, media sure. pipeline and capability okay. of the phone. So um, uh, I think that's where some of that confusion arose from. But there are a couple of apps. We're um, you know, as I said, we're a challenger, and uh, we, we're really excited about the progress that we've seen in in the roughly two years since we've launched. We've got over 120,000 applications in the marketplace, including the the overwhelming majority of all of the popular apps. There's a couple uh, that we just announced um, uh, that we're excited about. Uh, Words with Friends, Pandora. Um, there's a couple that are still out there, and, and we've got folks working hard to, to get those on our platform. One of the other things that having Windows 8 um, uh, you know, adopt a similar user experience and, and have some of this, the same reuse of code, for example, is going to help. We announced the other day that there were 40 million Windows 8 licenses sold, so I think that's going to create help create critical mass around the platform. And once people begin You're to see... You're saying from a developer perspective, I developed something for Windows 8, there's a lot of Windows developers out there. They're 99% of the way there for, uh, in terms of... Well, I would hesitate to, depending on the application, put a percentage on it. But there is a, yeah. a, a, a meaningful amount of code reuse, the tools, familiarity, the notion that this is really part of one platform, that your phone and your tablet and your PC and, in fact, the servers at work and, and, and services in the cloud uh, and the web are, or even, and even your Xbox game console are not discrete platforms um, but really part of a broader platform that users expect authentication to span them. They expect their content to flow. Right. And that's what we're delivering now with Windows Phone 8 and with Windows 8. Well, I'll tell you, everybody I know who's got a Windows phone actually happens to love it, and they say, ha-ha to me. So uh, <laughs> That's so what we're finding as soon. well. Yeah. Uh, I like this yellow one. Thank you I very much. I think you should try that <laughs> out. <here. laughs> OK, well, Greg Sullivan, Senior Product Manager for Windows Phone 8 at Microsoft. Thank you very much for joining us on Information Week's Value View. And we have a mug there for you. Oh, as, fantastic. Uh, yep, so that's for you. Thank you very much. OK, great. <laughs>